Hello, everybody. Welcome to Talking News. Also, Chase and a Murder. My name's Debbie. want to say, please, hit that subscribe button right now. Hit the like button and hit the notification bell if you'd like notifications. So there are several sad stories in the news that's been going on um, through the end of last year into the new year. And I was very busy, so I wasn't able to get those out. But now I'm working hard to get those stories out to make sure that maybe, you know, someone might have seen these phases and might know a little bit of something to help solve the mystery. I hope you all had a fantastic Christmas and a happy new year. I love you guys to death. And I know that we're still dealing with COVID as well. So please use caution, guys. Be careful out there. So getting started. So this story, I found this on KTVQ. And this story is about an eight-year-old child, Mildred Old Crow. I've never heard of this story, and I just found it. But anyways, um, federal authorities are asking for the public's help in finding the eight-year-old Mildred Alexis Old Crow, who was last seen on Crow Reservation in Montana. And that was more than a year ago. Now get this. So the search actually started for the child in November uh, 19th. And this is after relatives told the Bureau of Indian Affairs that they had not seen her since July of 2018. Now what's interesting is it's a statement released by the BA, I mean BIA says that the federal agency and the FBI showed that the little girl was last seen on the reservation March of 2019 in the custody of her appointed guardian. So firstly, I want to say that this little girl, she's also known as Millie. She's female, brown hair, brown eyes, and she was born May 3rd of 2012. They are saying that Millie is small for her age. And let's see if I can pronounce this. So Veronica Teresa Dust and Rosine Lincoln Old Crow, both 34, were arrested and appeared in Bighorn County District Court. And that was just recently for an arraignment. And they are facing misdemeanor charge of endangering the welfare of a child. Does that sound familiar, guys? And of course, these arrests stem from the disappearance of this eight-year-old child who was last seen March of 2019. But they didn't really issue a child, in, well, it was a missing endangered person advisory, which was issued November 25th of 2020. That is crazy. That doesn't make sense to me. Now, they say that Dust and Lincoln Old Crow were arrested as, as fugitives from Justice and Billings on December 23rd. The Crow tribe issued warrants for their arrest on December 16th. According to this, failed to produce the child, nor was a proof of life provided. Now that's scary. It's kind of the same thing that Lori Fellow case is following. And they say that the relationship between these two women and that child is unclear. But the warrant states that they are granted informal um, custodianship by the tribal court on or about March 14th of 2017. This seems like there's some red flags going up here, guys. So, Millie, who was six years old when she was last seen, and her current whereabouts are still unknown. The MEPA issued in November stated that she could have a possible physical injury during their appearances. Um, in court Tuesday, Dustin Lincoln did not waive their extradition back to Crow Tribal Court, and their bond was set at $1,000 with conditions of release. You must be kidding me, $1,000. So, Dust is being held at the Yellowstone County Jail, and Lincoln Old Crow was detained in the Bighorn County Jail, and they both posted bond. Come on now, guys. They've already had the, they were already considered fugitives. And here they are posting bond. Anyways, they have to report to Crow Tribal Court for arraignment within three days. Any further arrest or additional charges depend on the decisions made by the Tribal Court 
an investigation by the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Well, they'll be lucky if they see those women again. I mean, my goodness, they've already ran once. So a precious little six-year-old hasn't been seen. There's no clues. There's no more to the story, really. And you hear that, you know, a lot of the thing about a indigenous woman going missing. Well, what they don't tell you is a lot of it does happen within their own community. Regardless, I hope that they're able to find answers. And, of course, we don't think that this girl most likely isn't okay, but we hope she is. You really are living in a different world. I have to say, you know, the world that we come from, we thought we had struggles. But I have to say the racism and discrimination, the hate is is worse than I've ever seen it. Of course, the population's bigger. That has nothing to do with your leadership and your government teaching your communities to be good people. The uh, kidnapping crimes, the rape crimes, they started to go down and now they're on the rise again. What I did notice is the Trump administration did do a lot for the missing. Um, I was really thankful for that. There were so many kids that were recovered just in this last year. Um, it was just amazing. But right now we're having problems with, um, I believe there's a lot more serial killers out there and there are men out there hunting people. And not only that, excuse me, my allergies. Not only that, guys, we have parents parenting children who are feeding their kids politics. I hate they're just not very good parents, and then they're also abusive mentally and some physically. In between all that, they have people who are um, targeting them online. So a good story written by Rob McMillan, um, he, he, he warns people about, you know, the predators targeting children online during the pandemic that seems to have increased. In fact, they even say that it's exploded during the COVID-19 pandemic. So here's one of the problems is we are lacking the resources to fully investigate the tips that police are getting. And according to police, they say, quote, we could double the size of our team and we still be working as hard as we are end quote. That is incredibly worrisome, my friends. When people start to get the word of just how short we are on law enforcement, what kind of message is that going to send? Well, this is the problems you gain when you get large population, guys. And this has always been something I've been concerned about. Because not will only will it affect, you know, the crime in your area, the resources. It's going to affect many other things that you've always found easy to access, such as food. First, you'll start running out of brands that you normally get that are popular. From there... The trickle-down effect only grows stronger, stronger on each and every item. But I could go into that for hours. That's a topic for another day. But resources are going to become a very big issue. And the leaders of this nation, they're too busy bickering and fighting to fight any of the future problems we have about to gain and catch up with us. One of those problems was the pandemic. How could you not be prepared for something like that as leaders? And uh, let me tell you, I've spoken with some of the leaders and they could give a, they really don't care. What they say on TV is not what they're saying when they turn the TV off. And so this is an issue and this is something the youth needs to start paying attention to because this is your future. I mean, this could start affecting your family. And not only that, if uh, your leaders are blocking people, let's, let's say on Facebook, because they don't like what they have to say, if it's not rude or something, but they just don't like what they have to say, then they're not listening. And this is something I hear a lot of people complaining about. So it starts within your community and your leaders. If your leaders are not listening and paying attention, 
How can they be good leaders? It doesn't matter if you're Republican or Democrat. And one thing you need to do is hold them accountable for what they say. If they say something, go see if they actually uphold the promises because they're not doing it. If you need to, replace them all. Let me tell you, I've never seen adults act like they do today. And they are quick to bully and lose their temper on something they don't agree with. But we have children that are mixed in between all this arguments of who's right and who's wrong. And so you need to find that common place. And we need to start by protecting the children because the children are in danger. And if your leaders are not focusing on your children within your community and their safety, they don't have the resources available to deal with a problem, then you might need a new leader. Politics isn't just about whether or not you believe in abortion, whether or not you believe if gay rights um, of getting married matter to the world. It's their business what they do. No, it's not anybody else's business. We need to focus on areas where it affects our children. Our children need the protection. They need the resources available in order to grow up in a productive and loving atmosphere. And we definitely need to make sure that the people who work hard every single day are recognized for their part of playing a positive role within the community. And we really can't do that until our community is on one page. So what you have differences of opinions so what you have different uh, policies for politics what does that have to do with raising your children in a loving and moral atmosphere and so one of the big things we need to work on guys is getting resources to our law enforcement to be able to fight this growing epidemic of child predator. We also need to uh, give them the resources they need in order to make sure that every child is being treated morally and is safe within their own home. We have lost far too many children in the past few years from um, you know their own parents hurting them and they've been doing it for years. So I know I kind of went off here. I don't usually do that, but yeah, I really feel like we, we lack resources on building a better community. Our schools definitely should be teaching our kids that they have somebody to come to if ever, you know, you feel like you're being threatened in some way or you're in danger, especially through the school system, and that doesn't seem to be available any longer. So the 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 missing continue to grow and i don't think 2021 is going to be any different we can continue to try to work on raising awareness and we can just do our part by sharing and letting people know that we care but that's the best we can do for now but reach out to your leaders guys and insist that they start taking part in finding ways to make sure that our law enforcement has the resources it needs for those who are being abused, hurt, and hunted. Again, no matter if you're Democrat or Republican, a life matters, doesn't it? So you can agree on one thing. Children matter. And you really need to start pushing your leaders to start caring about your children and your neighbor's child. I'm going to go ahead and end it here, guys. Sorry I rambled a bit today, but I love you guys. Don't forget these faces. We have tons of women still missing out there. I love you guys, and I'll see you guys soon.